So in one of my recent videos, I spoke about Rocket Lake and these new backported 10 nanometer cores moving to 14 nanometer. And I was thinking, why? It's ridiculously expensive. Well, today I was going through my high-end desktop CPU guide for Anantec, and I think I may have figured out why. What's your minimum specification? So let me paint you a picture of Intel's high-end desktop stack. In 2014, we saw the launch of Haswell E, that 8-core 5960X. About 20 months later, in 2016, we saw the launch of the 10-core 6950X, which was the first 14 nanometer Broadwell E processor. Then we kind of hit a rough spot. So September 2017, we've got Skylake X on 14 nanometer, 18 cores. Uh, this is where Intel decided to push from using their 10 core low core count chip to their 18 core uh, high core count chip. And you know they still have the 28 core extreme core count chip, but they're not using that in a high end desktop space right now. Um, then move on a year later, September 2017 to October 2018, we get another launch of Skylake X. This is the 18 core 9980XE. Then a year later, November 2019, we saw the 18 core Cascade Lake X. 10980XE, also on 14 nanometer, basically Skylake refresh. And it's been about a year since then. And we've got nothing for high end desktop, nothing on the roadmap. What does Intel do here? So, normally with these high end desktop processors, it's just taking the enterprise silicon and making it more favorable for it in a consumer form factor. Um, that's what we've had for the last decade, ever since, you know, those uh, Nehalems and the i7-920, uh, i7-990X, that Nehalem Westmere generation. After that, from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge and, you know, all the way down now to Cascade, we've always got the enterprise silicon, but just, you know, no ECC, uh, fewer PCIe lanes, maybe maybe fewer memory channels. The thing is, every sort of year, 18 months, we always know that there's going to be an update. So we went from, you know, Haswell to Broadwell, okay, Skylake to Skylake to Cascade Lake, which is essentially three generations of Skylake since 2017. Okay, but there have been, you know, year on year updates for this product portfolio. And we're now seeing at the end of 2020, you know, global situation aside, we've got nothing new coming on Intel's high end desktop. And even worse than that, any hints of anything new on Intel's high end desktop map? Still nothing. At this point, we would naturally be looking at, say, the Cooper Lake processors, which are still 14 nanometer, the Xeons, and thinking, well, how about we bring those into the high end desktop space? Well, Intel's already said that Cooper Lake is going to be for select customers only on eight socket systems. And it's just another version of, you know, Skylake with BFlow 16 support, which is, you know, special AI instructions. So they're not going to bring that to the high end desktop space. After that, we have Ice Lake on 10 nanometer. You've heard of Ice Lake Xeon, right? It's a product that keeps being pushed back. Now, tentatively, we're expecting, we were kind of expecting a launch this quarter, Q4 2020. Realistically, that's been pushed back to Q1 2021. We all know the problems Intel's got with its 10 nanometer process. Those processors look going to be focused for the single socket, dual socket market on the enterprise. We've had no inkling of, you know, what sort of core counts we're going to get. We kind of know it's going to be like eight channels. But yeah, it's with those sorts of processors, you sell the Xeons because there you get more dollars per square millimeter of silicon made. That's where your higher profit margins are. The consumer grade processors are lower profit margin products. So you sell those either after or if you've got an excess of stock. With ice, those ice like Xeons, assuming, you know, a lot of Intel customers want to upgrade, they're just going to be focused on ice like ice like ice like Xeon, not the equivalent, say, ice like X for the high end desktop, which means that yeah, no Ice Lake X on the horizon. So what do we do now? Well, this is where I think Rocket Lake comes in. We've got these Sunny Cove cores that were built for Ice Lake on mobile, and we, they've backported them into Rocket Lake on 14, 14 nanometer. Now, you don't backport a core like that. It is the ultimate fallback policy. You backport it in the hopes that you never need it, but you still put the R&D in just in case it doesn't work. And I'm wondering if this is my, what we might see happen on the high-end desktop space. So Rocket Lake is an 8-core processor on the desktop. 
and it's an 8 core replacing a 10 core because these Sunny Cove cores backported 14 nanometer we assume are going to be bigger because they contain the AVX 512 units but the Skylake X cores already have AVX 512, Cascade Lake X already have AVX 512 so I'm wondering if Intel can't put 18 of these Sunny Cove or what they call them now, Cypress Cove cores so Sunny Cove on 14 nanometer is called Cypress Cove they could fit 18 of these Cypress Cove cores into silicon, put it as some sort of entry level single socket processor, I guess, still on 14 nanometer for the Xeons, but it makes it the perfect product for the high end desktop space. High end desktop space gets that, you know, 10 to 15% IPC up increase uplift going from the Skylake based core to the Sunny Cove based core. Power, big question, don't know. Uh, backporting a core built for 10 nanometer to 14 nanometer. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with the power there. You're quite right if you're going to question frequency, what frequency can they get? Again, the core wasn't built for the process. But 14 nanometer is high yielding, high frequency. Maybe they'll be able to get, you know, close to 5 gigahertz, if not on 5 gigahertz. This is a product which ultimately goes up against AMD's Zen 3. Now, if it's using uh, Ice Lake grade cores, well, we know it's not going to match Zen 3. We've already done the testing for that. Isolate Mobile versus uh, a Zen 3 core. If you limit the core power, then yeah, Zen 3 wins. So you're not going to be competing against Zen 3 16 core with an 18 core. You know, Cypress Cove based product. I don't know. Either that or Intel loses its complete high end desktop market. If there's nothing on the horizon, I mean, We've seen roadmaps come out and you know we don't we can't confirm if they're real or not but none of them say that anything's on the horizon at all i mean it's it's as if you're on a desert bus playing the desert bus game it's eight hours of nothing maybe a fly on the windshield halfway through but it really is nothing and i really can't see anything on intel's horizon which is going to fit into that space unless sapphire rapids maybe gets you know a lease of life into the high-end desktop space but then intel would have, would have lost would have lost all of its high-end desktop market to threadripper to amd's threadripper but if amd's threadripper doesn't have any competition does that mean that threadripper stops growing yeah from my perspective you know, that backporting those cores might be able to beat that horse a little bit more for intel's high-end desktop but otherwise it sounds like it's gonna go away slowly painfully to the point where people won't even recognize the CPU names. I don't know. What do you think? Is this an avenue for Intel backporting cores? Maybe we get a double backport. Who knows? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Many thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now, if you're interested in really boring videos about the tech media and how we interact with companies, I've got a video coming up for you. It's, it's done podcast style, right? So just letting you know. And what's your minimum specification for Intel's high-end desktop?